All right, y'all, welcome to the TSBN Podcast. I'm missing Easter. I'm here with... Dallas Windy. All right, and today we are going to talk about the championship game for March Madness. Uh, what's your th- uh, first thoughts on it? Uh, I had uh, UConn winning it anyways. Bracket wasn't perfect, but, you know, when, uh, we were here last time. We talked about the Final Four. I had UConn. Uh, Winning, getting past Alabama, getting past uh, the winner of NC State and Purdue, which, I don't know, I thought it would be a little bit of a better game, but, I mean, you know, they won by 15. Uh, that freshman had 15. He's been, like, good for them all year. And uh, their best player, their most outstanding player, uh, I forget his name, but he, he balled out last night. Uh, yeah, I can't say I'm really surprised. I had them going back to back. So, what you think? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think the same. You know, I wanted NC State to win, but, you know, I knew Purdue was going to win yeah. that game. And Alabama, I don't think they should have been there in the first place. <laughs> not not even because I'm a UNC fan. I just don't think they should have been there. I was I mean, a little shocked that they made it that far, yeah, because they, like, weren't a crazy team, like, during the year or, like, right. even in the tournament. But I guess they did make it far. But I don't know. I just didn't see them getting past a couple of those teams that they beat. Who did they beat to play UConn? Was it Tennessee? Nah. Oh. Um, I forget who, but anyways. Yeah, they – I mean, obviously beat some good teams to make it that far. But, you know, just a little shocker. A lot of upsets, definitely with NC State. Making it past Duke, that was probably the – one that hit home the most. I didn't think they would be Duke even, but <sighs> yeah, they uh, Alabama beat whoever played Arizona and beat them. Who beat Arizona? That was a crazy game too. Somebody beat Arizona. I know what you're talking about. I just don't remember. Yeah, because it was to go play North Carolina. That was another yeah. another good game. I forget who, but. Right. But, yeah, that uh, NC State-Purdue game, I I mean, they did – I think they did a good job against Zach Eadie for a while. Uh, Yeah, he started – no, he started off, like, Eadie, and then, like, they kind of were able to slow it down, like, especially when he got off the court and stuff like that. But, you know. Yeah. And then – They did what they can. I don't think, you know, I think UConn has been a very overlooked team for a while. Oh, okay. So Alabama beat North Carolina. Right. Clemson. Okay, and uh, Alabama beat Clemson. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. That was another good game. That game was close, too. Alabama and Clemson it was. Yeah. I, I wanted Michigan State to go a little farther. I mean, I knew they probably weren't <laughs> going to be, beat. I, no, I, I think they could have beat Alabama, honestly. I really do think they could have beat Alabama. I don't know. I just didn't see Alabama making it this far. I mean, they never were, like, crazy team that just stood out to me. Yeah, though, so. Arizona should have never lost. This yeah. went from a finals talk to a whole <laughs> a whole tournament talk. Yeah, Real but quick. to to get back to it, like, you know – I'm, I'm just really not surprised. I mean, they've been they've been the overall best team. They got one of the best records. They lost three games, I think. Yeah, so I mean, that's that. tough. I mean, like it seems like they've been playing together for a while. And like uh, their coach Don Hurley, you know, he had his moments, <laughs> little anger issues shown. Right. But that team is just so well coached. They do all the little things right: offensive rebound. Focus on their defensive assignments. Like Zach Eady, probably the biggest defensive assignment in college basketball. And they were able to limit him, even though he had like 30 and 12 or something like that, somewhere around there. But, you know, he's going to get his no matter what. But they still ended up winning by 15. So obviously they did something right, even though they, their game plan was pro- like when I was watching the game, I noticed like they were not fronting the post. They were letting that pass go through so Zach Eady can catch and score. I mean, obviously not to score, but, like, so he can catch. They weren't doubling off because, obviously, Purdue has, like, all shooters that are shooting 30, 40 plus from the three right now. And, you know, that's just the easiest shot in basketball, kick out three. 
So I feel like they wanted to limit the threes and like like make Zach Eady beat them because he knew that you know you're not just gonna lose to Zach Eady, turn around post hooks, etc. Like it takes a whole team to win, and I feel like everybody didn't show up on that Purdue side, but UConn really did what they needed to. Yeah, I think you know with I'm kind of gonna go back for a second to the NC State Purdue game, and I think when you you know, he Zach Eady is taller than both of their NC State's tallest players mm-hmm. by six and seven inches. So, of course, you're going to have to double up if you want to stop him. But I think with UConn and, like, how they have a big who, bro, he looked huge on the friggin' <laughs> TV. But you can start to focus on the other four players out there. And you can let him do his thing because you know he's going to do it no matter what. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like so you can focus on the other four people out there and limit those threes that they like to take. And then you pretty much got a game one yeah. right there. Because when they're shooting that three well, that's what, like, that's what I said. If they were going to win, they were going to shoot the three well. And they didn't shoot it. They didn't shoot it uh, bad. I mean, they just didn't get many, many crazy looks. But, you know. Right. But, yeah. That was a a good game for sure. Um, I kind of want to talk about the women's final. Not gonna lie, because we I don't think they get enough credit, and right. that was a good game too. Yeah, it was one of the most entertaining entertaining years like from college basketball ever. Like I feel like they I don't know if you've seen the views. They got so many like national views this year, and like. Kaylin Clark's gonna. She played her butt off. She had. She went out with thirty, and she had a double double. But I know she had thirty. Like that's a tough way to go out. And uh, I seen the video of the Iowa coach like talking to them in the locker room after, and she was just telling them like, you know, you'd be happy you're here. You know, you made it this far. You still made it to a championship. And she's. I don't know. She's gonna be really good at the next level. She's gonna break like every record. Like you know. As long as she stays healthy and, you know, take care of herself, which she will because she's pretty smart and, you know, she just seems like she should be there, I feel like. She also got offered to play in the big three. They offered her five mil to play in the big three, which I I would do because I feel like she wouldn't even make that in her first year at the WNBA, which I don't know. Maybe it's not about money to her, but back to the championship game. Yeah, that South Carolina team was – the real deal. I mean, when you only lose three games in the last three years, you're you're doing something right. Don Staley, I think she's the best coach on that women's side. She knows what she's doing, what she's talking about. Because right. her players are like, she got all dogs on that team. They're big, runs the floor, stretches the floor, gets great post looks. They know how to throw it to her over the top. They have one of the best shooters in college basketball, Tessa. She can knock down. I, I really like that South Carolina team. I hope I hope some of them come back so I can watch them again. That would be fun to watch. Yeah, and obviously, like you said, losing three games in three years, that's like – that's not just a, like a player <laughs> thing. Like, yeah. obviously, Don Staley, like, she's built that winning culture and built a culture where people want to come to. And it's kind of like UConn. Like, they've won six championships since 1999. Like – that just shows what kind of coaching you have there. That shows what kind right. of culture you have there. And I think, you know, the South Carolina is going to be good as long as Don Staley is there. Speaking of, South Carolina and Don Staley just got the number one recruit in the 24 class committed to South Carolina recently this last week. And that was like they just won a championship and you're getting the number one recruit. You, they're, they mean business. They're probably looking to go back next year. Yeah. I really think – I think they can. I mean, I don't know who's all leaving, who's all coming back, you know, much on the women's side. I got to get more into it. But yeah. they definitely – knowing Don Staley and her resume, they definitely can uh, get back. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I don't got anything else really to talk about. So, nah. we'll catch you all on the next one. Thanks for watching.